Hey there, guys and gals. It's Chris from Good Roads. Welcome back. In the last couple of videos, we've been making parts for a snowboard build. And today we're going to take a little bit of a detour so that I can make sure that the next part that we build, the next component of the board that we make, is done correctly. That component is the sidewalls. And the reason that I have to take a detour is because I want to do poured urethane sidewalls. Now, I did my homework before I started this project, and everything that I read, all the testimonies that I've heard about, all the discussion that I came across, has led me to believe that urethane sidewalls are hard, hard to get right. There have been a number of documented cases where people are trying to figure out processes for getting these poured urethane sidewalls, and what happens is after you've cut your channel for the urethane to go through in your, in your blank, the edges of it kind of like fizz before the urethane sets up and that makes for a really weak bond with the core. Now that's a trouble point in a snowboard. Those sidewalls are meant to take impact, they're meant to flex, but if they're not properly bonded to the core, they could split off and delam the whole board. That would be a critical failure. So what I want to explore today is different ways of treating all of the materials involved to try to reduce or eliminate that bubbling as much as possible. And for all the other shapers and builders out there, one other requirement for the way that I'm going about this is I am not making a pressure vessel. The fastest and easiest way to get rid of bubbles in urethane resin or any other resin is to put it in a pressure pot or a pressure vessel. And uh, no way, I'm not building a six foot long pressure vessel to put snowboard cores in. Not at this point anyway, maybe, uh, maybe in the future. Build a blast shield first and then maybe we'll build the pressure vessel. Anyway, for today, we are not going to be using pressure. We're going to try to get these sidewalls to bond and not bubble using different treatment methods. So put your lab coats on. It's time to do some science. The first step that I needed to take in this experiment was to make myself some test sidewall channels. And I knew this was something that I wanted to tackle when I made my core, so I built my core a little long. I cut off some of the excess core material and routed channels into it. There were a number of ways of treating those channels that I read about that other builders said worked for them for reducing those bubbles. I'm gonna be trying out three of them. The first set of treatments is to coat that channel in something. So I'm gonna do one example where I coat the channel in a water-based polyacrylic. And I'm going to do another example where I coat the channel in an oil-based polyurethane. As far as coatings go, I came across a bunch of different treatments that people say work. There are certain types of paint that people said work for them. There's the idea of lightly brushing some of the urethane on in like a thin layer. But I think as far as brushed applications go, these were the two that I wanted to test out the most. There was another treatment that I read about, and I don't see how or why it would work, but I was excited about trying it out. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's fire. Someone offered a really thorough rundown of pouring urethane that involved a flame treatment to the channels before pouring. So we're gonna give that a try as well. The next thing that I need to do is pour my test side rails. Now I want these as much as possible to represent the sidewalls that I actually want to pour on the board. So I'm going to be using the same urethane and I do hope to dye my urethane so I can get some cool color on the side of the deck. So I'm going to be sure to add some pigment to my part B before I mix the urethane together. You can see here that I'm not working in the shop. I've gone upstairs because my shop is very cold and I wanted the temperature to be warmer so that the resin would flow better and I wanted it to be warmer because it gives it a better chance of curing correctly. Once my urethane was mixed thoroughly, I poured it into our channels and then I applied another technique that I read about that's supposed to help with popping bubbles, which is as the resin is curing, you can run a torch or a heat gun over it and that's supposed to pop any bubbles that make their way up to the surface. And I could tell right away that that actually was making a difference. Once the resin had set, it didn't make any sense for me to sit there with a heat gun anymore. It needs time to cure fully. So I waited a day and brought our little test subjects back down into the shop. And here they are roughed out. I've got my control, which has no treatment at all. I've got my test that was treated with a water-based poly. I've got my test that was flame treated, and I've got my test that was treated with an oil-based poly. Polyacrylic, 
for the water and polyurethane for the oil. And I think that distinction becomes important, which is why I wanted to point it out. In some of these examples, you can already start to see the kind of foam that forms right where the urethane meets the wood. That's the thing that we're trying to avoid. But I didn't know if the foam was just on top because the bubbles had floated up or if they were all the way through the test samples. So what I wanted to do was run them through the planer. That way we could get a cross section and see how the bubbles worked as you get down through the side. To do that, I'm employing a neat machinist trick. I've seen a couple YouTubers do this. You take some blue tape, you lay it down on one surface, You take some blue tape and lay it down the other way on the other surface. And then you super glue the tape to the tape. And that gives you a really strong bond, but you can also remove it very easily because it's just painter's tape. Once all my samples were glued to a nice firm backing that is also long enough to make its way through my planer, I ran them through my planer a couple times till we got down into the meat of the sidewalls so we could take a good look at what was happening. Let's first take a look at our control. This is the sample that wasn't treated in any way at all. You can see that I got some grain tear out from the planer. That's not an artifact of anything that happened with the treatment. That was just the way the wood was oriented going through the planer. But leaving that aside, we can still see that along the edges of that urethane, there are a ton of bubbles and some of them are pretty big and significant. So this, this is why we're trying to find a treatment. This would make for a really weak bond and a board that would probably break first time you took it out on the mountain. Next up is the flame treated example. And this version didn't fare a whole lot better than the version that had no treatment at all. Now, I think that's my fault and I will get into that a little bit later. But as a treatment by itself, flaming or charring or toasting the inside of the channel did not seem to reduce the bubbles that were made at all. Next up, we've got the water-based polyacrylic. In some ways, it looks like there's some improvement here. There seem to be less bubbles and they're smaller, but the bubbles are still there. So the weak point is still there in the bond between the core and the sidewalls. This still isn't really doing what we want. And last up, we have the version that was finished with some oil-based polyurethane. And again, it's an improvement. The bubbles are smaller and that layer of bubbles is thinner, but that's still gonna act as a weak point. I wasn't sure if that amount of reduction was going to be good enough, so I went ahead and tried to break it. And as you can see, I could break the bond between that bubbly urethane and the sidewalls just with my hands. Now, if you've got an adult rider putting pressure on the edge of a board, that is an awful lot more force than I can exert just with my thumbs. So this also is not working for what we need. So in some ways it's back to the drawing board, but in other ways we did see improvement as we went through the different types of treatment. Let me share with you some of the thinking that I've heard from the community. The reason people think this bubbling happens is because urethane bubbles when it meets water. And anytime you're working with wood, it has some amount of humidity in it. It's not very much, but it's enough where if you've got the open grain on the side of a, a routed out channel and some urethane hitting it, First of all, you've got kind of a rough surface. And second of all, you've got some moisture. And that moisture is what people think makes that foam. And as we went through the different treatments, the charred one might have reduced that a little bit, but I think I actually got that wrong. I think the advice that I read was to heat the channel before pouring the urethane. And if you heat it up, that would drive out the moisture. I think what happened was I let it sit too long and the moisture reabsorbed into the wood, which is why it was indistinguishable from the sample that had no treatment at all. For the other two treatments, we had a water-based polyacrylic and an oil-based polyurethane. Both of those versions completely seal off the wood from the urethane, so we don't have to worry about the moisture in the wood. But the polyurethane is already urethane. So what I think is happening in this case is that you're bonding the urethane to the wood, and then you're bonding the poured urethane to the polyurethane. And I think that urethane to urethane bond is a little better. And my hunch at this point was we just weren't doing enough of it. So I prepared a second set of test samples. All three of these test samples got two layers of polyurethane 
with sanding in between. The sanding is going to give us a nice smooth surface. It's also going to help reduce any bubbles that happen in that first layer. And that second layer is going to give us an even better chance that none of that poured urethane is going to come into contact with the wood. There were a couple other things that I wanted to test. One of these samples, I drilled all the way through the sample and I'm covering the bottom with blue tape just to see if maybe you don't need to leave a layer of wood on the bottom. So I'm gonna mix up another test batch of resin. The first time I mixed my resin, I shook the bottles because the two parts need to be integrated before they're mixed. This time I stirred them because stirring is gonna introduce less bubbles into the urethane itself. It makes sense to me, you want less bubbles, maybe introduce less bubbles, you knucklehead. At this point in the process, there was one more thing I wanted to test with this set of samples, and that was the heat treating before pouring. So I pulled one of my samples to the side and I ran the heat gun over the other two. Once that was done, I poured my urethane. I hit all three samples with the heat gun, again, to drive out and pop any bubbles that were sitting on the surface. And I did that until the urethane set. Then we're gonna go one more time through our blue tape and glue technique so that we can run these samples through the planer and get down into that cross section to see what's going on. And look at this. This first example is the drilled example that was heat treated. The second one is the one that was heat treated and had the blue tape on the bottom. And this third one, again, we had some tear out in the planer, but this is the example that wasn't drilled all the way through and wasn't heat treated. All three of these examples look so much better than the first batch. They're next to no bubbles around the edges and I think it would give us a really strong bond. I do think that hitting the channel with the heat gun before the pour made the slightest bit of a difference, and at the very least, it's gonna give us a better chance that our sidewalls are gonna come out great. So I think that's the method that I'm gonna end up using. So just to recap, the method that I found that worked the best is you rat out your channels, paint them with a layer of oil-based polyurethane, lightly sand that layer, coat them with a second layer of oil-based polyurethane, let that cure it completely. Mix your polyurethane resin. When you go to mix the parts of your urethane, stir them, don't shake them. You heat the channel that you're gonna pour your urethane into. Pour your urethane and then take your heat gun or torch and wave it over the top of the liquid urethane to raise and pop any large bubbles that are hanging out in there. Doing that seems to result in a bond between the urethane and the core that doesn't have any foamy bubbles and is nice and strong and resistant. Woo! Science! We did it. We came up with a treatment that should get us good sidewalls. I'm ready to go try to take this to the core. And I'm really glad that I didn't just rush in and try to do that without doing these tests beforehand. I think it was really useful. Anyway, I hope my little science experiment was informative and entertaining. There are varied opinions about this and there are a lot of techniques for getting this right that I haven't covered. So if you want to discuss some of that, leave a comment down below. With this information, we're going to be continuing on with the rest of our snowboard build. This video is part of a series about my first real snowboard build. So if you're interested in seeing that, subscribe, stick along with me for the journey. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll see you soon.